Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now the International Monetary Fund has decided to postpone its scheduled consultations with Russia in Moscow. I mean this is obviously a consequence of the sustained pressure on the organisation not to visit Moscow amid the anti-Russian rhetoric that's prevalent among the IMF member countries led by the United States and the countries of the EU. Incidentally, since the IMF was set up back in December of 1945 at the Bretton Woods Conference, at the same time as the World Bank was set up, it was agreed at the conference that the head of the IMF would always be a European and the head of the World Bank an American. It's also pretty well established that the IMF is a global tool of the US and the globalists and you'll have to look at some of the heads of the bank, particularly the French ones who've dominated its presidency in recent years, to see it does the bidding of the globalists and if you cross them it can get scary. I mean, just look what happened to Dominique Strauss-Kahn, the former president who was framed for a rape and a huge political scandal in New York, which was actually designed to derail his pre French presidential aspirations, which they did. Then, of course, there was the convicted fraudster Christine Lagarde, who left the IMF presidency to head up the European Central Bank. So they never actually pick independent candidates, but political place people, and most are mired in some sort of scandal or another. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinside.com, and further develop it. Now you can do this by making a small donation which is done by clicking at the thanks button on the bottom of the video screen. Now everybody who does donate gets a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now I think the intention of the IMS visit this time was to resume consultations as part of their annual economic review. I mean, these are not exceptional occurrences, but standard events. I mean, the Russian Federation has been a member of the fund since 1992. And as such, meetings are in accordance with the fund's charter. Now, these meetings are essential for aligning policies, maintaining global financial stability. And it's worth noting that the holding of such consultations on an annual basis fulfills the obligations of both the fund itself and the countries that are members. I mean, the representatives of the international organisation also reported that meetings with a number of other interested parties were part of the IMF's mission, but they didn't specify with exactly whom. I mean, since 2010, the IMF and the World Bank Group have been conducting comprehensive analysis of the Russian financial sector and the financial sector assessment programme. I mean, although the last... IMF mission was in 2019, then consultations have since been conducted remotely. I mean, however, since 2022, they've been discontinued, and that was obviously because of the situation in the Ukraine. Then it announced that it wanted Russia's economic situation to be sufficiently stable for it to come back and do some analysis. Still, there's obvious reasons why they want to come to visit uh, Russia, according to Lubov Klasinova, who's a macroeconomist at the Stolpin Institute for Growth. Notwithstanding the efforts of the EU and the US to marginalise Russia's influence in the global economy, it's evident that the domestic market continues to exert a significant impact on the international processes, and the IMF is evidently keen to resume its analysis of what's going on in Russia firsthand. However, the ministers of the economics of Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Finland, Sweden, Iceland, Denmark, Norway and Poland all wrote to the IMF collectively, Kristina Grigoryova. Yeah, that bunch of economic pygmies whose influence on the global economy is about as large as their political or military clout internationally, which is less than zero, and all of them are reliant on the EU one way or another for their funding and their very existence. Now they contend that Russia should not seek guidance from the IMF. Furthermore, resuming cooperation puts the interests of other member countries at risk, particularly as they're trying to secure additional support for Ukraine. Plus, the credibility of the IMF is called into question. Now, they're actually assuming that Russia requesting the meeting is looking for guidance. That's laughable as Russia has overcome all the shock and all sanctions from hell imposed by the US, UK, EU, G7 and all 24,000 of them in 14 different packages. 
and it's not only not suffered, but his economy has grown and prospered, unlike the economies of those who signed the letter and the rest of the G7. I mean, perhaps the IMF wants some lessons on economics from a country that's rewritten the textbook on them now. However, a greater concern for the IMF and the collective West is a question of circumventing sanctions. I mean, this is the construction of a system of interstate settlements that are not dependent on dollars or fiat currencies, not subject to Western tra <coughs> sanctions, and ideally are completely not transparent to the US Treasury. Now, it's immaterial whether this will be a currency for international settlements among the BRICS countries or a system of clearing houses for servicing bilateral settlements between the member countries of the BRICS. Now, it's also worth noting that Russia's not sought any financial assistance from the IMF since 2000. So it's likely that the state concerns by European leaders think Russia uh, is strong and economically developed and it's causing them severe problems in competition in the global market. I mean, for Russia, resuming interaction with the IMF would look at pursuing an open economic policy and demonstrating a willingness to engage further with foreign countries and private investors. I mean, I know that Russia's open to this, but it's a big BRICS countries and Latin America and the global south first. The chances of Americans and, and Europeans who left are, are gone and there's no way back from them. Their old market share has been taken by either Russian domestic companies or the Chinese or Indians. Now many foreign companies and potential investors who have traditionally viewed Russia as a vast resource and con consumer base have lost out. Now, it seems likely that the resumption of the fund's activities uh, will happen, uh, but it will be as soon as uh, they can get around the criticism that's been there. I mean, it should be noted that despite everything else, the IMF is not saying it's not going to cooperate with Russia because it's not in the fund's interest to cease cooperations with countries that contribute to the organization's financial resources and are significant participants in the global financial system. I mean, plus, in the light of the deterioration in relations, Russia might just directly address the situation of leaving the organisation, which would diminish its, uh, its prestige. I mean, the IMF has stated that the reason for suspending the consultation were not political, but purely timing and economic, and regular and annual missions that have been uh, suspended since 22 to uh, will continue at some point. Now, the decision to resume consultations was taken before the basic improvement of the economic situation in Russia. And the IMF is aware of the large scale sanctions against Russia have had on other countries of the world and the global financial system. And it's now looking for ways to restore that level of trust. It's also possible that the IMF has decided to see uh, how the economy's performance is going in the context of the challenging sanctions environment for the likes of Europe. They obviously want to know how the economy has adapted, how it overcame the obstacles and shown the level of growth with a particular focus on the manufacturing sector. It's also possible that the new systems developed in this way and probably the that some that have not yet appeared in global practice may have interest to other members of the IMF. It's also clear that the global financial system will undergo significant changes in the near future, with the role of digital currencies, both private and public, becoming increasingly prominent. Now, the IMF is likely to be increased in, interested in practical experience of the expanding the scope for the use that these currencies can be used in. I mean, Russia could actually serve as a testing ground for the developing the means of adaption to new realities. So it seems that the Russian the funds represents will visit Russia in due course, and Russia is prepared for this. Also, uh, the visit is delayed probably until Russia has ended the conflict in Ukraine, which will be soon, and sent the humiliated vassals of the EU and the US home with their tails between their legs. And then the IMF will start acting in the role it was set up for and not a tool of the US and the globalist hegemony. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can 
make a donation by pressing on the thanks button. Don't forget the comments section. Love to read your comments. Love to respond to your comments. So I'll talk to you all again soon. Goodbye.